success came pretty quickly but I was obsessed from day one. Like it was, I would literally like get up at three in the morning before school, go and do some training, come home, lift sandbags, like do anything I possibly could to be the very best that I could. Before BMX, and actually for the first year or two years, I actually did athletics. For me, it was all sports that were cheap. Like I come from a background that didn't, we didn't have a lot of money. So everything that I did was cheap. You know, athletics, all I need is a pair of trainers and just run fast. So it it was the perfect sport. Yeah, any any sport that I could do, I would try as long as it was cheap. Like as long as the price bracket was in about three pounds for a session, I was there. (laughs) And all of them sports were. So So you you were conscious of that when you were young, that sort of money was an issue and you couldn't ask to do stuff that was probably going to be too expensive is that something you're aware of yeah I think it was something I was aware of but I think it was almost like them sports that were a bit more underground a bit more grungy that people wasn't necessarily doing that interested me because I was always different I felt like from a very young age I was wired up a little bit differently to my friends I'd just go to the car boot on a Sunday and just start digging through stuff to be able to like when I was doing BMX to be able to think right if I can go the car boot and make a couple of quid on selling on these items I was doing that from the age of 10 like I was just not quite wired up right (laughs) but if there was a world championships in car boot and you'd be right up there oh yeah for sure that could be my next career path maybe that's something we'll come on to (laughs) (laughs) so uh sport then continued you got quite quick success in in bmx and can you tell people that haven't stalked you on wikipedia how quickly that success came and what happened so i started in 1999 and in 2000 i went to my first european championships yep. that was a battle in itself like i always traveled alone to to these to all my events my family never went so i just like bunk in with someone who could give me a lift and i could like put my one-man tent up and camp out whereas everybody else was kind of in hotels and preparing for the race and I was just so excited to be at an event where there was loads of people because the more people there was I was all, all about pressure like the more pressure there was the more I got out of myself so I seen these thousands of people's people in the grandstands and I was just like it's game on like yeah. I'm excited to race and I become European champion after he, it was about 11 months in total then I become European champion so success came pretty quickly but I was obsessed from day one like yeah, it was yeah. I would literally like get up at three in the morning before school go and do some training come home lift sandbags like do anything yeah. I possibly could to be the very best that I could and then success came this is it so people see on paper overnight success and the reality is very different to that hard work self-discipline from the off really because there's something that you really gravitated to towards you were passionate about it right yeah, hundred percent. And my granddad always said, "There's no shortcuts. There's no yeah. shortcuts to any place worth going. There definitely isn't. Like, no matter what you do in life, and and want to be successful at it, there's no quick path. There's no quick fix. And if there is, it's not been built on funda- like strong fundamentals. A common theme of all this Duratus Mind podcast is recognizing that it's the hard work that people have to put in to get the growth out the back end. People are often looking for hacks and hacks don't really exist in the Mm. real world if you want true success or something you value anyway so european champion at 11 world championships uh when you were 12 years old over in america then so yeah so in bmx you have like an amateur uh, world championship so like age categories so like i was the 11 year old world champion uh, european champion and i was chatting i said mum i really really want to be world champion like i'm european champion now And I know that the girl who got second to me got world number two the year before and I beat her easily. I said, I need to go to the world championships. Yeah. And she said, where are they? And I turned around and said, they're in Australia. And she was like, okay, we can't afford, we literally yeah, yeah. can't afford it in the time frame that we've got. She said, where are they next year? And so she was thinking I'd say you're in Europe. Yeah, yeah. And I turned around and said, Louisville in America. And she yeah. was like, Right, okay. So she said, at least we've got time. Like, at least we've got time. So she Wasn't a no. Yeah. um, Yeah. So she did, to be fair to her, she did absolutely everything. She went, she wrote to the local newspapers. The police ended up getting involved, um, doing fundraisers for me. Yeah, and they they got all this money together. And the cost of the flight and the cost came up was, okay, we've got all this money, but we haven't got enough to send you your mum or someone with you. I was like, that's all right. I'll go on my own. 
So I, so I said, so I said, I'm going to go to America on my own. So I, I only had a chaperone just to, because I had a connection flight. Yeah, yeah. So there was like, they paid for like a chaperone to, to connect me to the next flight. And from there, I went to, to stay with a family that I'd known in BMX. Now, if anybody knows, BMX isn't, you know, you need a good set of wheels <laughs> on your bike. That You know, they're, they're your essentials. But I found some on a, on a like an, a chopper, like an old like an old bike. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, great. Like I didn't really know what was good and what was bad. So I, yeah. I took these wheels, got to the final, was winning the final easily. Just before the finish line, I felt like I was going through like quicksand. Like I was like, yeah. what the hell is happening? Like I'm slowing down and I'm pedaling as hard as I could. And I got passed on the line and got a photograph finished. For, and she and I got ended up getting second. But there, I knew that if I was going to a world championship again, there was not no chance that I was ever going to be beaten. And luckily, I never was. So, 